Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here today. As you guys can see up on the screen, I want to talk a little bit about SoFi Technologies Incorporated. This is ticker symbol SOFI for those of you who are maybe not as familiar with this company or with this stock. And today was not a great day for SoFi. You can see they were down 0.8%. It was really just up and down throughout the whole day. Um, just a, a kind of a flat day, but a flat day in the red, which is never what exactly you were looking for. I thought this was kind of interesting because I actually had today off of work for Columbus Day. Uh, I didn't know if the stock market was going to be open or not because it, it seems like the you know the stock market's randomly open and closed on certain days and not on others but it was open today and this was overall not a good thing for SoFi or really the market in general you can see here the Dow Jones was down 0.32 S&P down 0.75 kind of a rough day for the NASDAQ being down over a full percent. Russell 2000 was down 0.6%. So just red all across the market. Uh, SoFi was down less than some of those indices, more than others. Overall, I would say SoFi was pretty much in line with the market today. And that's never a terrible thing. Obviously, you'd love to be outperforming the market. And that's really your goal. You know, what's the point in, in getting in an individual stock if they are going to uh, perform in line with the market or underperform the market? That doesn't really make much sense because you're getting a lot more risk for uh, the same or less reward. But uh, yeah, we'll see how things go over the course of, uh, you know, the future. Obviously, the stock market and just the economy and, and the world economy in general right now is still in a really, really weird place. We don't know what to expect. We don't know what's in the future. Generally, these things go up and go up slowly, but lately they've been going down and, and going down slowly. Um, so if I year to date, you know, still looking at a minus 68%, which is just really, really crazy to even see and say, um, but they're definitely not the only company out there. Uh, and usually when you see a company down 68, 70%, it's, you know, people are like, oh, this thing's dead. This thing sucks. It's down this much because it was a trash company. It was way overvalued, all that stuff. But people are actually really, really still excited about SoFi, even though it is now uh, down below $5. Um, 52 week low at 479. So we're not at the 52 week lows, but man, we are pretty damn close. So uh, getting into the news and stuff today, obviously plenty of stuff to talk about just like always. Um, and yeah, what we have here is some people, uh, I don't exactly know how this happened, but some people, they found Anthony Noto on SoFi. I don't know if he's public or, uh, you know, I'm assuming he's public, but, um, apparently he was starting to make a lot of trades and people were starting to post his trades. You know, you can follow Noto's trades by scrolling to the bottom of his investor profile. I don't know why this was such a big deal all of a sudden, but all of a sudden people were posting like all of Noto's trades and stuff. He sold Zoom uh, at, at 115. You can see that's like towards the bottom here. Pretty bad one year performance overall. Um, sold eBay three weeks ago at 55.59. You can see that's like towards the bottom. But again, we don't know where he's buying this stuff at. Uh, he did sell Shopify at 7.22, which uh, again, it's like kind of close to where we are right now, I guess. Uh, I don't exactly know. I feel like it's gotten much lower since that, but it also did stock split and everything. Uh, a week ago, uh, sold Lit, the Global X Lithium and Battery Tech ETF. Seems like he was maybe green on that one, but sold it around 80. Uh, he sold uh, Sark, the Tuttle Capital Short Innovation uh, ETF at 43.39. Seems like that's done pretty well over the past year, but I don't know. I, I, it's just kind of interesting overall. I don't really know that it's just this big of a deal. Uh, I want to see his burner where he does all his degen shit. This is funny. This chart was made on April 14th, 2022. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, it seems like Noto, you know, wasn't really performing that well overall, but it's been hard for anyone to perform well overall. But it, it's also funny that he's in a lot of these stocks that a lot of other people are in at this time. You know, he's in Zoom, he's in eBay, he's in Shopify. This is a lot of stuff that you'd see on like Wall Street Vets or Jim Cramer talking about or stuff like that. So just kind of thought it was funny overall. Obviously, he's a guy who has been um, consistently, at least in the beginning of 2022, consistently buying the dip on SoFi, loading up on shares, all that stuff. We'll have to see how that plays out. Um, but yeah, people are just talking about all of Noto's trades and stuff uh, at the time. And I guess now his account has gone black. Uh, I don't, again, I don't really know the whole thing. Again, uh, the whole thing is supposed to be like public investing and it's supposed to be like a social media and all this stuff. But uh, obviously a, a person of Noto's like uh, stature and, and power and all that stuff and authority, uh, probably not the best idea for all his stuff to be public, maybe not even legal. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at. Um, also, I thought this was interesting. SoFi Olympics 2028. I was reading Wikipedia and randomly came across something that I thought was interesting. SoFi Stadium is going to be the location for the 2028 Summer Olympics opening ceremony. This is definitely bigger than the Super Bowl. Uh, somebody said, my my friend's dad works for SoFi. He says that Nodo is going to light the flame personally. It's got to be a joke. I don't know. Um, but but yeah, people are saying this will be exciting. And obviously, SoFi spending all the money they are on uh, SoFi Stadium, getting as much use case out of it as they can, getting to host all these big events, getting their name out there to the United States and to the world is going to be very, very big. 
you know, you can say, yes, the Olympics are bigger than the Super Bowl, but also SoFi is mostly going for uh, an American or United States uh, audience at this point. Yeah, getting out to some of the, the international crowd can't hurt them. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think this stuff is ever like that big of a deal, but it's not a bad thing. I don't think it can be a negative ever. So kind of cool. We also had this. Uh, I don't. I didn't look who this article is from. It's from Seeking Alpha. Uh, the Bears will soon be converted to Bulls. SoFi, an article all about them. Again, uh, Seeking Alpha and a lot of these companies, a lot of these news sites and stuff have been posting a lot about SoFi recently because people like this stock, people like this company, and again, the valuation is only getting more attractive. The price only getting more attractive as it continues to go down and down and down. That doesn't mean it's necessarily time to buy right now or, or whatever, but um, you know, anyone considering SoFi as it gets cheaper, that, that theoretically should only make it better. Now, maybe it's still bad or whatever, but um, still better than it was when it was $12, $15, $20, whatever. Uh, SoFi's poor year-to-date performance is reflective of a stock market joined at the hip to the monthly gyrations of a hawkish Fed. That is quite the sentence there. Uh, the company's operational performance is positive as its flywheel strategy continues to drive strong revenue growth. Uh, and the pullback of the commons has left SoFi a low valuation that will shoot higher once broader market sentiment shifts, which is definitely something I believe. But uh, we'll have to see um, just exactly how, fly, how high it's able to shoot when the market does turn around. Again, is it going to be a huge overperformer? Is it going to perform in line with the market? Is it potentially even going to underperform the market? You know, who the heck knows? Um, but it is interesting to me that we have more people talking about SoFi. This company comes from 24-7 Wall Street. Uh, five familiar strong buy stocks trading under $10 have a big upside potential. Uh, Genius Sports LTD, I haven't really heard of them. Uh, Southwest Energy Company, uh, Technip FMC PLC, never heard of them. Vivid Seats, and then SoFi Technology. So another place just posting that they're uh, you know excited about SoFi right now. Um, a strong buy in the words of at least this website and this writer. So we'll have to see what's going on there. But I do think this is, uh, you know, really, really cool. And again, it's always good to get people talking about the, the stock and the company and, and getting it more and more out there. Again, just something that I don't think can be a bad thing. Last thing I want to talk about today, I do think that this is really, really big. SoFi is at a 2.5% APY while big banks are not budging their savings rates at all. There's no bank that has an interest rate as high as SoFi with SoFi kind of diversification, diversification and an all in one shop. There's some banks that may have interest rates slightly above 2.5%. I don't even know if that's true. Um, but SoFi is the most diversified fintech bank that comes with an incredible APY in the 99 percentile. The national average interest rate for savings accounts is only 0.14 percent, according to Bankrate September 28th weekly survey of, survey of institutions. So that's really, really crazy. I mean, you can see they're in the top 99 percent. You know, they're in the top 1% in terms of what they're offering to their customers and to the masses. You know, it's like, hey, if you're with one of these big, uh, big financial institutions that has all this money and could be offering you guys these kind of rates and doing these kinds of things for you, but they are refusing to come on over to SoFi. You should join us. Uh, and, and the big thing about this is to get the, the biggest interest rate possible, you have to have your direct deposit set up with SoFi. So it's really a way for them to get a ton of money coming in and a ton of recurring revenue uh, and, and money coming in all at the same time, which uh, to me is just absolutely genius. Now, I'm sure it's costing them money in some ways, and especially if their competitors are keeping interest rates low, um, you know, there, there is a downside and there's a negative, but I'm assuming the customer acquisition has just been insane off this. Uh, the, the customers you get are going to be very, very happy. They're going to be loving this, especially when they're looking around and seeing the competition. And at the end of the day, SoFi's competition and goal is to steal away customers, to steal away people and money and all this stuff from these big banks, from these uh, institutions, these like old school, uh, you know, banks were supposed to be the new cool kid on the block or whatever. And I just love what they're doing. I do wonder how they're going to be able to keep this up, how long, how expensive is it going to be, how successful is this? And then eventually once rates start coming down, how is the customer base going to react to that? Or when uh, all that stuff happens, who knows? Um, but for right now, this is an absolutely insane thing that I think more people should be taking advantage of. Uh, and I think it's the, the biggest advantage that SoFi has right now, uh, especially over a lot of the, the competition. But pretty much it for this video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you did enjoy it. I would appreciate that so, so much. Uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about SOFI. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe, save today, and all my latest content. Hopefully, catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.